For professional advice with a personal touch, consult F.L. Fuller Landau, chartered professional accountants and business advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Welcome to today's entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit that drives Quebec business. My name is Josh Miller, uh, co-host uh, Dan Delmar, not in this week, so flying solo tonight. So you have just me, Josh Miller from F.L. Fuller Landau. And uh, later on the program tonight, we have a phenomenal story and a story that every Montrealer must know, St. Vieter Bagel. These guys have been around 60 years. We're going to have father and son here, uh, father Joe Morena, son Vince Morena. Uh, only one of the brothers will be here tonight. And we're going to, I'm sure we're going to run out of time, but what a fascinating story. Uh, true entrepreneurs in this business. But. And of course, after that, towards uh, the end of the program, other than the one piece of advice that these veteran entrepreneurs will give, we'll also have Micheline Maya from uh, our office, uh, P. Vizio at FL, uh, talk about some human resource challenges a little bit. You know, what happens when you have a 24-7 environment with employees and maybe a little bit on harassment because, you know, there's not enough harassment news uh, and, and new, harassment information in the news tonight. So, but before we get there, naturally, we got to talk about our entrepreneurial news of the week. And I'm going to bring you up to speed on a few things. First of all, I am just back from uh, a great trip to Hong Kong as I go every year. As you might have heard uh, Dan uh, and Mike mention last week, who was filling in. Uh, thanks, Mike, for, for doing that for me, as you do a great job each time. And uh, it, is, it is always a vibrant, vibrant, vibrant part of the world. Uh, and I guess the, the, the quick items or the quick takeaways that I want to leave you with my Hong Kong trip, because, uh, you know, it's not just about Montreal. It's not just about Canada. It's not just about North America. It is definitely worldwide. The world is getting smaller. And if you're, if you're going to look at any markets beyond North America, uh, while Europe might seem closer, uh, Asia is, is certainly a market filled with consuming, a consuming monster group of, of middle class people. So let me just give you a couple of, of information, and and this is this is a little bit on on China. First of all, uh, everybody knows China to be manufacturing. In the past, it's been seventy two percent of their of their GDP has been manufacturing. Today, only forty two percent is manufacturing. You have about a little above nine percent that's agriculture, and the remaining forty eight percent is coming from services. So the services industry, as those big cities grow, and you have finance and software and tech is absolutely huge and growing. And remember, when we're you know when you're thinking about economics and you're thinking about industry, a little 1% jump in an increase coming from these services adds a million new jobs. It's kind of crazy. There's no doubt that China is growing. I think one of the biggest aspects uh, and the topics that I heard over the over the many days that I was there was all about e-commerce or what I guess they're now calling e-tailing. Uh, not retailing online, but e-tailing. And the, the, the companies that are out there that are, that are eclipsing the American companies, uh, unbelievable. I'm sure you've heard of them, but I'll, I'll list a few just so you're, you're aware of what we're talking about. Alibaba, no question. Everybody's heard of that. They're an, an online trader, but even, even more than that. Tencent, which is the WeChat platform, which I guess is as close to Facebook as you get, but you can do so much more in WeChat, including paying for goods, uh, transferring money to friends. Uh, Baidu, which is their local Google, because Google in China isn't, uh, doesn't work so well, so, but Baidu is excellent. And from an Amazon uh, equivalent, you have Taobao. And these, these companies absolutely eclipse the ones happening uh, or, or the, the business that's happening in North America and around the world. Why? Because they have that captured audience. They have, even though China is 1.4 billion people, and if not everybody's online, then, you know, at least a third of them are on there and buying. And it's, it's absolutely astounding. So the, the amount of activity that's happening in the e-tailing space overseas is is amazing the the new companies coming in taking advantage of artificial intelligence taking advantage of big data and using it uh, not just the internet of things but now it's the location of things so it's not just about uh, you know what what you're buying and, and and your your spending patterns and what you like but it's now also you know it has the ability to track you so when you're in an area or in a region it can really specify what's around you uh, so it's it, there's no doubt that there is a ton of activity going on in Asia. Uh, there is plenty of opportunity for 
Canadian, for Montreal, for Canadian companies to sell out there. It does take some input. It does take some effort. It does take energy. It does take dollars. But if you if you have all that put together with the right strategy uh, and you take advantage of some some perhaps Hong Kong uh, tax uh, tax advantages, then uh, then you can certainly make it happen. It could be all worthwhile. It's uh, it's it's quite amazing what's happening out there. So before we get to uh, to the rest of our program, uh, and we're having Saint Vie- Saint Vieter uh, later on in the program, talk about their sixty years of history with uh, Joe and Vince Morena. Uh, I'm going to continue on again. Dan Delmar not here this evening, not here this week. So just myself, Josh Miller from FL Montreal on today's Entrepreneur. Bitcoin. You know, I'm sure everybody hears about Bitcoin. It's a lot of activity going on out there. No question about it. Let me give you a little history on Bitcoin, and that's just one of the hundreds of cryptocurrencies out there, but it seems to be the most popular and the most talked about. If you look back three years ago, December 11th, uh, 2014, Bitcoin was trading at just under $345 per Bitcoin. It has gone up exponentially over the years, but no more than the last short while. If I give you a quick rundown, you know, if, if December 2014 was 345, December 2015, 450 plus, December 2016, just shy of 770, February of 2017, hit over 1,000 per Bitcoin, 1,000 US dollars, by the way, it's all in US dollars. Uh, then about five months later, it doubled to 2,000. Two and a half months later, it went over 3,000. A week later, it went over 4,000. A couple of months later, over 5,000. A couple of weeks after that, over 6,000, it just kept going and going. But the biggest jump, it hit 10,000 at the beginning of December this month. And it is now almost $17,000, at least as of uh, when I last checked uh, uh, this morning. So just almost $17,000 US dollars. So I guess the question is, is it in a bubble? Who knows? Is it in a bubble or not? But you have a lot of experts weighing in, anybody from Hollis Wealth to Scotia Wealth to Robert Herjavec uh, that you've seen in Dragon's Den to a couple of private investment groups, Jim Patterson, Tony Chapman, uh, Blue Line Futures. And what are they saying uh, about Bitcoin and what are they saying about this potential bubble? Well, you know, they're, they're raising questions as well. You know, first of all, it's gambling, right? You know, so if you have no idea where it is uh, and if you're not sure what you're doing, definitely gambling. So you got to definitely get informed. But it's, it's not a regulated currency or not a regulated industry yet. There's a little bit at starting, but if it's not regulated, well, what happens when the regulations kick in? How is that going to affect it? Uh, you know, is there still room to grow? There are a limited number of Bitcoins out there. So definitely a possibility of, of absolute growth. Some say it's only a third of the way there. And if it's only a third of the way there, then it could hit 50,000 uh, US per Bitcoin in the not too distant future. That's huge. But it's definitely speculative, and there's cert- now there's futures out there. So now that there's Bitcoin futures, that gives an additional credibility to Bitcoin, uh, which uh, which is rather interesting. You know, it's really coming into coming into the fold uh, and coming into something that is is maybe more tangible. It's still abstra- abstract to many people, but Bitcoin is is, is something that's that's amazing, uh, and I guess the there's this concept of blockchain that we've spoken about before and blockchain is is really in its most simplistic form something that tracks the these digital transactions online so it does add also a little bit of credibility and it can track a whole series of transactions one on top of the other so there is some trackability to this bitcoin but not everybody understands it it is the minority and when people don't understand it and it's unregulated then there's, there's, there's little, there's a lot of speculation that can go on, but it could continue to go up. So just shy of seventeen thousand dollars, and who knows where it goes. So we're uh, we have so much, so much more news that we'll hit uh, next week as well. And next week we'll talk about some of the top ten e-commerce trends that will impact retailers in two thousand and eighteen. Uh, but before we get to next week, uh, coming up on the program. St. Vieter Bagel. We have Joe and Vince Morena, and then, of course, Michelin Maya, who is uh, going to be on towards the end of the program talking about some human resource challenges. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult FL Fuller Landau, chartered professional accountants and business advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. 
Welcome back to Today's Entrepreneur, a story about the entrepreneurial spirit that drives Quebec business. And tonight we have a phenomenal, phenomenal story to tell with a couple of guests in studio. From St. Vieter Bagel, we have Joe and Vince Moreno. Welcome to the program, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Brent. Uh, easy, to, easy to have you guys because first of all, having you know the the bagels are absolutely delicious. You know Montreal is known for its bagels, and certainly Saint Saint Vieter is uh, is definitely up there as uh, as a, as top bagels in Montreal, no question about it. Uh, and there there's no question that there's a long history that goes into it. But for the for the maybe half a listener that might not know what Saint Vieter bagel does today, can can maybe you, you fill in the listener and say what what exactly is Saint Vieter bagel today? Well. Same video bagel for some people that don't know. We're uh, the longest running bagel shop in Montreal. This year we celebrated our 60th, 60th anniversary. So we uh, we started in 1957. And uh, what we do is we make bagels the old fashioned way. So uh, every single bagel is hand rolled, baked in a wood burning oven 24 7. So those people that, that know us uh, know what a hot bagel is at 3 in the morning. That's what we do. But the, you're you're not just about the bagels in the store. There's also other other aspects that spun off. You have restaurants as well. Yeah, over the years we've uh, we've expanded. So our primary business is bagels. So we uh, we retail bagels and we wholesale bagels, and we sell bagels online and we cater bagels. And now uh, we have uh, three restaurants: one in the Plateau, one on Monklin Avenue, and one in the West Island, and a little cafe on our offshoot bakery in Laval. Uh, we have a food truck on the road, and uh, we also do catering, and we also do uh, online business. So kind of expanded quite a bit from the first store in 1957. And I guess I'll turn to Joe and say, Joe, how did you get started with St. Vieter Bagel? Well, what's, the, what's the short version? Because you could talk for an the, hour no, probably. The short version. Well, the, the, the St. Vieter Bagel was founded by uh, two Jewish fellows. One was Jaime Zelkman, and the other was Meyer Lefkowitz in 1957. I came in in 1962. At, at 14 years old, and I started working with them, and uh, I bought in in '74, and then uh, Mr. Lefkowitz sold the, the rest in '94, and uh, the rest is history. And uh, my my sons came in with came in with me, and they're expanding and they're doing a good job, uh, as you see. You, you started at 14, but yes. you became an owner after X I, number I of years. Yes, I bought in the first 50% in 1974. Uh, that was the first fifty percent. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was it difficult. You know how how was it buying a, a company? You know at, at that early age and dealing with it was that a, a difficult discussion to have with 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 Meyer? Not at all. Because see, Meyer was a concentration camp uh, survivor, and he had difficulty communicating with workers. So I had worked for him. Then I I I went and I wanted to be an accountant. I was studying, and I, and I wanted to be an accountant. Thank goodness you didn't. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. Well, I wasn't good at accounting, so. <laughs> but just good at counting uh, bagels. Yeah. So uh, uh, I always kept in touch with him, and uh, he couldn't find workers. He couldn't. He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't keep up with the with the situation, and it was getting busier. So I came in one day, and he says, "Listen, uh, you know." He actually offered it to me and uh, made it very easy for me to get in. You know, to, to, to you know, he, he lent me the money. <laughs> Wow, that, that, that's can't great. Can't be that. You know, you can't can't be that at all, no question about it. And ultimately, you took over 100%. Now, Vince, when did you kind of get active in the business or was basically from birth? But, yeah, but you could say that. I was uh, grew up around the bagel shop, and I, was, I let people know that. Uh, and I'll speak on behalf of myself and my brothers as well because we, we were all in the business together, and we have a similar history. So while my dad was, uh, there was, Meyer was still around, and my dad was uh, half owner, uh, during the 80s, my brothers and I, we, uh, during school, uh, we all worked there. We all, that was our summer vacation. That was our summer job, uh, working at the bagel shop. So every uh, And then during school year, we worked weekends. So at Tiapubu, we had two educations. We, we all went to school, and we, we all did well. But at the same time, we got the street smarts and, and the entrepreneurial smarts of the bagel shop during that time. You're listening to Today's Entrepreneur. We're talking with uh, Joe and Vince Morena from St. Vieter Bagel. Joe, did you insist on your kids having an education and maybe even working elsewhere or getting experience somewhere? That was a mother's job. It's just <laughs> a good education. <laughs> she still blames me today for the kids being in the bagel shop. I want them to be lawyers, accountants, but they chose. They, they went, When they finish uh, their degrees, they, uh, uh, like Vince, started working somewhere else for a while. Because I didn't believe that my children should come into my business unless they got experience elsewhere. 
So he, he worked for PMG Group, is my cousin Vince Morena, uh, taught him all the business the dealings. Yeah. And uh, th then after a couple of years, he, he joined us. Was it difficult when the sons came into the business to hand over the reins? You know, were they, were they was it a, a teaching aspect or did they come in like it was it collaborative or kind of? Well, the transition know. was slow. Because you know, it, 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 it's like the, he, Vince, we started they, on the ground floor. Yeah, you know, they, that, they, they, they were in there already, and by the time I was ready to give up, uh, you know, they were all ready to to kick me out. Like, say, no man, <laughs> come on, stay in Florida a little longer <laughs> in, in winter, you know. So it, it it's worked out for us. The, 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 you know, I'm still involved. I, I still go in and do the little things. I do not day to day operation. I do the stuff that I enjoy now. You're listening to Joe and Vince Morena from St. Vieter Bagel. Uh, later on the program, we'll have Michelin Maillet, and we'll talk about some human resource challenges. Uh, St. Vieter, St. Vieter is a 24-7 operation, so uh, definitely some employee matters to talk about. Um, so coming up soon and is going to be that, that story and, and much more. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult F.L. Fuller Landau, Chartered Professional Accountants and Business Advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Welcome back to Today's Entrepreneurs. This is Josh Miller from F.L. Montreal. Uh, Dan Delmar is off this week, so uh, taking over the, the helm uh, from Dan. And we're here speaking with uh, Vince and Joe Moreno. Uh, from St. Vieter Bagel. Uh, phenomenal story. They've been around since 1957. Coming up later on the program, we'll have Michelin Maillet as we talk about human resource challenges. Uh, as St. Vieter operates 24-7, 365 pretty much. That's right. uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, Joe and Vince is one piece of advice just before the end of the program. But l let me come back uh, and, and ask you guys. There, you know, you, you're expanded. You started with this one store on St. Vieter, and you now have multiple locations and restaurants. What about that first expansion time? Joe, do you remember that first time where you kind of opened up that second location? Yes, uh, I remember it well. It, it was basically out of necessity. We, we were it was just busting at the seams of the main store. I remember there was a time where we would, during the weekend, we would serve one dozen per customer. And and I would tell Meyer, I said, listen, Meyer, this can't go on. Or we, we, the customers are going to go away, and uh, finally convince him. He, you know, he, he says, "No, no. You, you always just say I can't eat two two bread a day. I only need one." You know, so I told we 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 opened the second shop on one five eight Theater, but even, not even four or five hundred yards away, uh, because at a necessity we needed to train workers. We couldn't train workers at our, at that number one shop. So there we have the opportunity. We used to do a little bit of wholesale out of there. The wholesale was getting bigger and bigger. And that, basically the first shop was a necessity. And now, now Vince, you know, when, when you came, you know, came in with your brothers, was it a, a much faster expansion after that? Because you had, I guess, many hands make light work. Uh, not, not that fast. It's, we have, we have a kind of slow, but steady pace. Uh, Basically, because the bagel is so not so hard to make, but it's menial labor. Uh, because they're all, I just can't push a button and push out another twelve thousand dozen bagels. They all have to be made by hand. So there's there's a curve to it. Uh, we can only train so many people at a time. And the most important th thing to us is always the quality. So we can't train fifty people and open five stores. We kind of every time we open a new store, we 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 get staff. We over we. We overlap staff in the old store, so uh, new staff can learn from the older staff. So it's kind of an apprenticeship that follows, and then we open another store. So have you not been tempted by technology? There must be machines out there that can make your bagels much faster. Oh, for sure. The old man doesn't agree. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say better. <laughs> the, the, the old man doesn't agree. We, we, uh, I always say, you know, we, we what, don't change what took us there. You know, we uh, we started with a hand roll bagel. We tried to be a traditionalist as, as long as possible. You know, when now we're going to face our challenges. You know, with the Zico logs and the smoke. Uh, there's a lot of challenges in the business, but we're going to try to stay as original as possible for as long as possible. So, does that mean? Do you have your each facility has uh, an oven and a and baking? You don't? Do you centralize the the facility or the baking? Well, the formula is. Um, Oh, just touching on what my dad said, what 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 holds us back also makes us special. 
So, uh, so uh, although we can't go at the speed of some of these automated places, which we work at 35 dozen an hour, and I've seen places work at 3,500 dozen an hour. So we're one thousandth of a modern place. But, but that being said, people search us out because we are unique and we are special. It's still uh, that artisanal bagel, I guess. It's still that artisanal bagel. So, yes, we're a little bit more expensive on the shelf, but it's one of those little things that instead of paying two ninety nine, you're paying three ninety nine. It's a dollar, but you're splurging for... It's not a big splurge, you know, for a little bit of luxury. Uh, now, what's what's interesting is you had your own shops and you were you were to the customer, you were retail, but at some point you did go into wholesale. Um, did it start with restaurants? Did it start with big grocery stores? Where where was that starting point? Started with beauties. <laughs> beauties. <laughs> beauties. We, we've heard Jaime, a lot about beauties yeah, in the last short yeah, while. Yeah. Jaime Skolnick who just passed away recently. He was our, our first wholesale customer, actually. And he, to, to this day, he still get fresh bagels every morning, and then the rest. Uh, well, the wholesale evolved, meaning uh, up to about probably 15 years ago, we never sought it out. It was always, uh, do you guys sell wholesale? Yeah, we do. So we started in probably in 84, 85 with a little station wagon on the road, and it was just people that would call us. And then around 1995, and it, w- it was also because we couldn't f- we couldn't make enough bagels. We all we had in in '95 were two stores, and then we opened one inside the the Esposito on Marcelare, and then we opened up Mount Royal in '96, and then we had more. So I'm going to touch on the, the last question: was what's our formula? So we we believe in retail, but every retail store furnishes the wholesale network uh, because we only work at 35 dozen an hour. So whatever our our philosophy was, we always want hot bagels for our customers in the store. But to always have hot bagels, you got to keep producing. And the, the, the stuff we produce, we sell in the wholesale market. We're talking with Joe and Vince Morena of uh, St. Beater Bagel. So getting into, you're also in a big grocery store. You're in Loblaws, Sobeys. Right. What was it like to get into the big stores being, you know, uh, an entrepreneur? I know you had a number of locations at that point. But dealing with the, those big buyers, getting shelf space or buying shelf space, how was your experience with that? Well, uh, our first... You'd say box store where the probably goes in the metros on the island of Montreal, and we were in a unique position, meaning we weren't l- we weren't sending reps and people at samples. They w- they actually came to us, uh, which is rare, and we're we're privileged to have that opportunity. And with Metro, in the beginning, they wanted to okay, we love your product, we want you in all the stores, and we say, oh, we can't do that. We can only do so many stores because that's our max production. And where we've evolved over the last few years is that we've expanded to the point where we can say yes to to some of the larger customers. And it, it is a different ballgame. You know, you're dealing with uh, different percentages. You're dealing with, instead of delivering 10 dozen per store, you're, you're shipping pallets to the Maritimes. You're shipping pallets to Ontario. And it goes through the larger systems that they have. And there's their self-distribution systems and their... Uh, you know, they take percentages at certain levels and seeing if the numbers work for yourself. So it, it is a different game. But getting shelf space was not too difficult? Or you hey, had you know such what? a unique product that it, uh, it just kind of... It's, being, it's a challenge now in Ontario. Uh, in Montreal, it wasn't that much of a challenge because people knew us and they always gave us the good brand, shelf, space, right. shelf space. However, we didn't go into the stores and demand it or ask for it or buy it. Uh, what we did do is we did a lot of grassroots marketing where we always have a team, one or two teams that go into all our grocery stores and do, we always thought the best marketing is get the product into people's mouths. So we have two uh, tasting teams, sampling teams that go to grocery stores every weekend and they say, try our bagels. And that's how that's how we get the ball rolling. So quali- quality control, just, just quickly, just before uh, we end off this little segment, quality control has always been big. You always have, you know, you're making sure that it's consistent. As you, have you always made sure that it's consistent, or is it just that your people are so well trained? It just that's what happens every time. It's hard to. It's to, eating to, a lot of bagels. Yeah, <laughs> you have to make a lot of bagels. No, but it's always been hard, challenging. The only like you know, with your workers today, you got to be a team, you know. And and we have a lot of uh, twenty or thirty year old workers that really control our business. The, the the strength of your business is the strength of your of your top men, okay? and everybody knows. What quality is? You see, you gotta give out the same. People pay good money for a Sevier bagel. We expect top quality. 
Excellent. You know, thanks, guys. There, there's so much more to the story, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll stop for now. Coming up on the program is Michelin Maillet. We're going to talk a little about human resource challenges and today's uh, great entrepreneurial market. Uh, and of course, uh, Joe and Vince Morena's one piece of advice for today's entrepreneur from St. Vieter Bagel. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult F.L. Fuller Landau, chartered professional accountants and business advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Welcome back to today's Entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial spirit that drives Quebec business. We're here with Joe and Vince Morena of St. Vieter Bagel and joined by Micheline Mayette from P. Vizio by FL and our human resource uh, specialist. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the, the topic has come up, certainly, as we know, St. Vieter is open 24-7, 365. Uh, there's definitely some human resource challenges uh, that, that come up, you know, whether it's safety, whether it's, you know, fatigue, whatever it might be. So when you're, when you're dealing with that milieu, what are some of the challenges that entrepreneurs uh, should consider? I mean... People that work at night, all the same labor laws apply and, and all that type of thing. I think the main challenge today is finding workers. I mean, and, and this is across many different industries, but it's already hard to find people to work during the day. So it's just an extra challenge trying to find people to work at night. Um, you know, you have uh, some people that prefer working at night. That's great. But, you know, the majority of workers, you know, just if you look at daycares and stuff like that it's not it's not convenient for everybody to work at night so i'd say that's one of the, probably the biggest challenge uh to night workers there, yeah. there's not too many bats and owls that can make and serve bagels so yeah, yeah. it must, <laughs> must be a little difficult you know i i guess yeah. i turn to you joe and, and vince and going you know over the years you know with with each store that you've expanded to you've had to find more and more people has it been a challenge to find to find people to to do those shifts well, I should know about night work. I worked the, I worked the weekends for 35 years, so Friday night to Saturday night. That, you know, and, but with the challenges, it also comes, you know, night work is peaceful. Mm -hmm. You just do your job and you get a whole different crowd of people that walk into the bagel shop, you know, and everybody's happy, you know, a little tipsy. You know? So it's, it was, I, I kind of enjoyed working the night shift. But today's new generation, you know, it's when you tell somebody, hey, you know, we work at night. Whoa, weekend and night. Whoa, I can't go out. <laughs> they just walked out. They didn't. They didn't even want to be trained. You know? So that's where my sons take over, and they 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 do all the training. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and you raise an issue. There's a whole bunch of characters that come in at night, and some of them aren't too sober. So I wonder, Michelin, does the safety, you know, health, wellness, safe, well, health, wellness, safety, uh, you know, how does that come into play, and what do you know entrepreneurs need to kind of consider? I mean, sometimes when you have people working at night you tend to have less people on the night shift. So, I mean, here in this case, you always have a group of people here, but a lot of companies, uh, sometimes you'll have maybe one or two workers. So it's important to have some kind of system in place if something does happen, that there's a person that they can call or a way to get in touch with somebody quickly. When you have a group of workers, I, you know, the biggest thing is often you have less supervisors on the floor, so people are kind of self-managing themselves. So you really need people that you can trust and that are autonomous um, to be left alone because they tend to have a little bit more responsibility. Do you do you train, uh, I don't know, Vince, when people are working late at night, do you tell them, you know, how to react in certain situations if you have a, a tough customer that comes in or, well, you know, what to handle? I, th I think the most important thing for us is that we always have, like we tell, what we say, a top-notch guy at night. So if you have one top, I mean, at night we only have four or five guys there. So we have one top-notch guy and that kind of sets the precedent for all the other guys. Uh, we were fortunate to have a few of them and yeah there is like you know people we've been we've thankfully we've never been robbed we've been uh i mean you big, just need, big, you... i'll just tell you a little story bagel guys are a little bit nuts some of them you know so <laughs> one time a guy came prison in, company accepted yeah, yeah, exactly I'm sure. yeah one time a guy came in with a knife and like four guys looked at him and said listen you better leave before you get hurt <laughs> you know so he turned around and he left and uh but those issues do come up you know you do mm -hmm. get and the fortunate thing for us is that we're, there's always people in the shop. Mm -hmm. So people are not, you know, people are going to have a hold up, don't like to see other people. So mm -hmm. uh, you just need to have some guy, you know, trained in a black belt in karate or something. Yeah, right? that's. Uh, we do. <laughs> that's you you do. Have, yeah. our, our, night, our night manager is uh, five then. Uh, <laughs> but besides that, uh -huh. what you were telling me about night workers and people, in our case at Sevier, we're the protectors. 
Mm-hmm. People have problems. They, they go to the beer shop. They're always open. They always help. You know, like mm-hmm. and, and 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 we generated that. You know, when I used to work at night, you know, a lot of people would come in with problems. You know, all kinds of problems. Right? Okay, we, a real we always try to help out. Yeah, people that are in trouble. Just you know what? Stay here a couple hours. So Michelin, I guess training is an aspect. Whether it's policy manual, whether it's uh, what have you, uh, physical training or or verbal reactionary training, that's important to to have for your team, right? A hundred percent. I mean, you have to have people that are well trained, that are responsible, that are autonomous, so people that you can trust, and and it's just all the time, hopefully, but even more so at night. So often, I mean, also a lot of companies tend to pay a little bit better at night than during the day to help attract people. So, you know, that's also a benefit uh, for somebody who wants to make a little bit more money and is willing to, you know, as a night owl, then sometimes the fit could be very good. Yeah, culture too. Culture at night mm-hmm. might be a little bit different than than culture yeah. during the day. Yeah, for sure. As people have fun. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks very much. Mm-hmm. It, it's definitely a, a topic and a concern for entrepreneurs that certainly on the retail side that are open pretty late uh, and definitely St. Viator. Uh, thanks very much, Michelin. Yeah, and as we approach the last moment of our show, we'll, we'll turn to both Joe and Vince Morena, St. Viator Bagel, and ask you guys, what would be your one piece of advice for today's entrepreneur? Well, my one piece of advice is if you want to make it in business, in any business, and you work hard, Put in a lot of work, a little love, and that's the, that's the secret. You'll, you'll succeed at anything you want to do in life. That we can tell from you, Joe. That's that's no secret there. How about you, Vince? You know, just about the same thing. The only thing I would like to add is like sometimes you've got to be headstrong. You have an idea, and you just got to focus on it and just go for it, and don't let anything else get in your way. You know, uh, and hard work is is a big part of that. But you just got to focus on something and just go for it. Excellent. Thanks, guys. And you know what, what What? came out with me with the show, we didn't really talk about that much, but as a family business, you guys seem to have, everybody has found their place and their role, and that's what that's what you guys have, have really come to learn to understand uh, and work very well with amongst that family group. Joe with your three sons, Vince, and, and your two brothers. And I think that that's something that not every family business has that harmony, and you've found that we, harmony. We have our, the, their mother to thank. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, you, you the have, real boss of the family mom. did a good job you with have the, your enforcer. The, well, we thank, uh, we, th- we thank you guys, uh, Joe and Vince Morena of St. Viator Bagel. Great story. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Michelin Maya, Pivizio by FL, HR specialist. Thank, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Josh. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Next week, we have uh, Solo in the City. It's a story about reinvention, uh, reinventing themselves. Uh, this will be probably a third time coming up, reinventing themselves, but should be a great story. So thanks very much. You want to check out all our past programs, check out flmontreal.com. Thanks very much. Have a good night.